one of the questions I've had for myself is when I go shopping in the winter time, how cold does it get in the front when it's cold outside? Do we get any residual heat coming from the electric motor below or from the heating system inside? I know there's no vents in here, but will this stay above freezing when it's below zero outside? We're on our way to Idaho Falls today. It's early December and it's, as you can see, it's cold outside. It's uh, minus seven degrees Fahrenheit. Probably might get a little colder the further we go down the road. We started out with a 91% charge. Tesla is currently estimating that we're going to arrive at our destination with 64%. Typical winter day here in Wyoming. We have dry roads, lots of snow. We uh, preheated the car for a half hour before we left. I'm a little surprised that it shows we don't have we have limited regen because it, it fully was charging. 40 amps for an hour before we left, and I ran the uh, turned the uh, preheat on for a half hour before we left. But I think the battery packs cool awful quickly. Now we're down to minus 11. Well, this is the town of Alpine, Wyoming. <laughs> I guess the autopilot didn't like that. So after uh, 11 miles, it's adjusted itself. I think when you initially start the trip, it doesn't take into account temperature. But after driving 10 or 15 miles, it starts to look at the energy consumption. We've been basically going downhill, but with the cold temperature, we're averaging 401 watt hours per mile and so it's adjusted our energy consumption and now showing that we'll arrive at 61 percent. We're about uh, 38 miles into the trip. We've dropped down into Swan Valley lost probably 1,500 feet in elevation at this point. And the uh, Tesla Navigator trip meter has uh, been bouncing around between 59% and 60%. One of the things that I have noticed when moving from version 8 to version 9 of the software is we've kind of taken a step backwards. It does a, a lot more ping-ponging between the lines now had that early on in the car about a year ago and then as the software improved it sort of went away and now that they've come back with version 9 the, the ping-ponging seems to be back. Uh, I have hopes that they'll get that rectified. I don't know if I'll be able to demonstrate it for you here or not. We'll, uh, there's a straight section of the road and you can watch the steering wheel. It's subtle. There's no reason for this ping-ponging back and forth. Let's see if you can... I've noticed where it's worse is where the lines are really wide. The narrower the lane, the straighter it seems to go. A lot of the roads out here, are, the lanes are fairly wide. I don't want this video to come across as I really that I don't like autopilot because I do, but there's just a lot of things that Tesla needs to work on. And here's a perfect example: the speed limit on this road right here is 65 miles an hour, and uh, you can't use autopilot on it because the uh, database that they're using shows the speed as being 45 miles per hour. Now. The speed limit on this road was 45 miles per hour, but that was two years ago when they were doing construction. But uh, it hasn't been updated, so for this 20 mile long stretch, you can't use autopilot. It'll limit you to driving you know, 50 miles per hour, five minutes, five miles an hour over the speed limit. And this is not the only example. There's a place over near Jackson Hole where they had a, a small section of construction um, two years ago, and uh, it was for a short period of time they were working on a place where the road had slumped. 
well that road the speed limits back up to normal now and every time you approach that little section the car just automatically goes on to a, you know catches it by surprise it goes from 55 miles an hour down to 25 miles an hour because that's what the restricted speed limit was two years ago and uh, if you got cars right on your butt they're gonna get a big surprise so you have to anticipate that I really look forward to the day when uh, the autopilot will be based on reading the signs, not on some kind of a GPS-based location. And uh, that's there's just all kinds of locations all over Wyoming and Idaho like that. Many of the roads in Wyoming, the speed limits are have been raised to 70 miles an hour. They did that a couple years ago, but the database still shows 65. Here you can see the speed limit side here, 65, and the. Uh, Tesla is showing the speed limit at 45. Okay, we've arrived in Idaho Falls with 57% of our battery remaining. The outside temperature now is 4 degrees Fahrenheit. And here's our consumption. We averaged 324 watt hours per mile for the last 30 miles. and we've driven for a total of one hour and 26 minutes. Now we'll go outside and uh, I'm curious to see what the, uh, what the temperature in the front is. We started out at about minus 11 degrees and it's four degrees now. Oh, you can see there's not much heat that gets in the front here. It doesn't take very long for your car sitting out in the cold for that battery pack to get cold soaked again. Okay, we're just leaving Idaho Falls now. Temperature is warmed up to 16 degrees. And since we are shopping, our battery has cooled down. We have limited reach yet. Starting out with 51% and Tesla is projecting 21%. Now we're heading back up the mountain, and the temperature is 10 degrees outside. And as you can see, it took about 30 minutes for the battery to warm up and we get our full regen back. And Tesla's energy prediction graph now has dropped down to 15%. And I hope it stays there, because uh, if it drops a whole lot lower, we'll probably have to slow down. Here's the town of Irwin. Okay, we've just finished our trip. We ended up with 14% of our battery remaining. So we've arrived home. See what the temperature is inside the frunk. Looks like it's 20 degrees. One advantage of having a cold frunk get to bring home some great frozen desserts. <laughs> These are two of my favorites.